Okay. So we're going to talk more about Symbiflow ish stuff today. Um, so I guess before that, I, I it's probably worth talking about for a minute about, I thought, talking about net lists, since I'm going to show you some net lists. And you'll notice we just like to throw around the word net list all the time. And students often ask us, what is this thing you call a net list? So does anyone want to take a stab? What, what is a net list? Links to... What's all Obvious. <laughs> the list of nets. Ah, there you go. The list of nets uh, and, well, and other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Is this a net list? Usually, usually when we have net lists, it's so one. It can be in lots of different formats. Okay, it could be in things like edif or blif, or it could be in Verilog or VHDL. So here I have a really simple Verilog circuit. It's n3 input and gate. I don't know if we'd call this a net list. Usually a net list is some, some gates or flip-flops with wires connecting them. And, and here, I guess we'd call this a bit more behavioral. I'm kind of using some expression operators here. But, but if I put this into Bovado and compile it, synthesize it, I can ask at any point in the flow for a netlist out from Bovado. Okay. And let's go. Oh, let's, oh, maybe I lost it. Let's go find. I thought I had it open, but now I realize I don't. So I zoomed in. Why are the files I'm expecting that here? Okay. Okay. So here's a net list I got out of Avado. This I actually asked for after I had done like full synthesis, synthesis and implementation. I don't know if it looks any different than if I had just done synthesis. But here's some stuff at the top that says, hey, this was made in Avado and such and such. Okay. And oh, look, they put on these little comments. It says, this is a structural net list. I don't know, what, what do you want to save me here? What, how would you define a structural net list versus a net list? I think it's probably <laughs> structural meaning there's no behavior at all. Okay, okay. It's probably just primitives, it's, you know, that are library primitives, essentially. Okay, so yeah, so I've still got my three inputs and one output from my AND gate, okay, and Let's see what we have. We've got three I buffs. These are the actual like input pads. This is this is a special name, I buff. This is like part of the primitives that make up your Xilinx FPGA. So this maps directly to a bell. Is that the right word? An I buff would be a bell, we'd call it basic element of logic. Okay. And one output. And there's one. LUT I'm using. Okay. It's kind of funny because it's called a LUT3, and we don't actually have LUT3s on the FPGA. They're all just LUT6s, but you can stuff a LUT3 in a LUT6. So. Um, and you'll see it's got the init string here. And the LUT has inputs I0, I1, I2, and an output, and you'll see it's connected. So, so this here, this is a net list. And we would call this a tech mapped net list, okay? Because it's it's not just any old AND gate. It has been mapped to Xilinx primitives. These are the actual resources we have on the FPGA. Okay, I could have taken that circuit and mapped it to an Intel tech map net list or, or a different family of Xilinx FPGA that would have different things. Maybe they're all called iBuff and LUT3 on every Xilinx FPG. I'm not sure. Okay, so anyway, that's that's I, I just wanted you to see a net list. Okay. So then Dr. Nelson talked about we talked about like Phasm that we could have this like 
I'll make one call. Yeah, sure, please. Do you notice that that's actually a Verilog design? So a common way to express a net list is as a Verilog design, but you don't need to have it be a piece of HDL. You could just invent your own syntax and say, here's how I'm going to tell you the wires. Here's how I'm going to tell you the building blocks and just list them. And there have been many of those netlist formats in the past. But a Verilog, if you ever heard the word Verilog netlist, that's what they're talking about. Because that's legal Verilog, right? You could synthesize that Verilog. Sorry. No, that's fine. And hey, for this, I, I have my FASM file as well. Okay. So if we look at this, we should probably see this is probably where that one LUT ends up because I've got an init string on the A LUT here. So I ended up in this tile at this slice in the A LUT. And that pattern of ones and zeros clearly is an AND gate. I, I don't know. If we, if we wrote out the truth table, maybe it would make more sense. Okay, we've got some routing and then then I have my IOs, okay? So the IOs have a bunch of things to configure them, whether they have pull-ups or voltage levels and things like that. But I'd expect to have four IOs and I don't know what's going on here. I've got some other stuff. I don't know. I don't know what, you know what all that other stuff is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've been wrestling with it for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and some more junk on the end that gives us grief, so. Um, Anyway, so, so you could take that and you could turn it into a bit stream with FASM to bits. And then, but it's kind of goes back and forth. You can go from a bit stream back to FASM and get this again, okay? But then there's another tool called FASM to bells, okay? And when you hear FASM to bells, I want you to just think, oh, let's see, oh, I wanna get back to my other file. I have too much stuff open. Mm -hmm. Not that one. There we go. I mean, these are all bells on the FPGA. So when you think FASM to bells, think FASM back to a netlist. What it does is it takes a FASM file and it goes backwards. It recreates a netlist from those. So I have one. I call it reversed because I'm going back the other way. And now you see I've got all these wires. It doesn't quite look as clean as it did before, but you know, it's, I, I, it's a six lot now because once it actually went to a bit stream, I, I didn't really know that I put a three lot there. I can't really tell the difference. It's just ones and zeros. And so um, it comes back as a six lot, another six lot, Another one. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you do. <laughs> what are those other lots? Pass through stuff? I don't know. Keep going. Just. <laughs> <laughs> these just look like these are just ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. So, so I'm guessing somewhere here. Where's the Where's the actual lot? Uh, the actual. So while he's looking for it, <laughs> if you look at a bit stream, a lot that has been programmed to have all zeros of the configuration bits and that is used in your design to output a zero, right? You can actually program a lot to output zeros, is indistinguishable in the bit stream from a lot that isn't being used because all the configuration bits for that one are zero. And so one of the interesting things about things like FASM to Bells is it outputs everything, even stuff that isn't used, possibly. So why did it output these? Because, because I had a wire that connected into it? Somehow it detected. Yeah, we've seen them from FASM to Bells that output thousands of LUTs <laughs> that are unused. Okay. And we actually had to write a tool to filter them out so we can make sense of it. So here is the one that I'm actually using, and you'll see that I am actually using three of the six inputs, okay? And yeah, and the other one's perhaps some wire that goes into this, 
like fans out and goes to one of these other ones. And so it can't tell that it's unused, okay? And I think Phasm to Bells has some extra option to trim some of this away. I don't know. Okay, it has an option to trim away top level ports. Yes. Okay, but not, I was just hoping maybe there's an know. internal one. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, this is here. This is one of their repositories. Um, so one thing that's neat is if you look, okay, I guess a couple things worth mentioning. There's no names anymore, right? This is all just like all my wires have these horrific names. How come? Aren't those like the actual names of the wires in the FPGA? At least they look pretty similar to the ones on like the Bovado netlist when they give it to you. Yeah, okay, yeah. But also, so yes, that's, that's right. That's where the names come from. But you'll notice they don't really match names in my design anymore because once you go to a bitstream, there's no extra, it doesn't put in extra stuff in the bitstream like, oh, you know, this net had this name from the original design and things like that. It's just ones and zeros, how to configure all the little muxes and things. So all that stuff is lost. And so it's not recoverable from, from the bitstream. Okay. What is, but look, I, I do have four, four of my things, my top level ones, the names were saved. Or how, how is that possible? I don't know what the names of those ones are. Well, when I ran it, I gave it my original pin constraints file, my UCF file, okay. Or UCF, XTC, sorry, I'm like going age. back in time, huh? During your age. <laughs> XTC file, um, which told it, hey, at these actual IO pins, these are the names of my design. So it could figure those ones out. It, if you give it the XTC, it'll restore those, but it doesn't do any extra work. It doesn't go look in and say, oh, the then that must mean that the wire coming from this one is named this or something like that. It doesn't do any of that. It just gives you this back, but, but you get a netless back. So um, I don't know if there's much more to talk about than that, then some of you are using this tool. And um, I guess to end my little segment here, I'll ask why, why would you want such a tool? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious going the forward side, we would like to use open source tools and things to make our own bit streams. And we're always trying to compile designs to put them on the FPGA. Why would we want to take one and go backwards? Because we want to make sure that the bit stream that got generated matches what we wanted our original design to be. Okay. So we really want to know what's inside this thing and, and yeah, check check that it matches. Yeah, so we have one project doing that. Any other? Yeah. Reveal company secrets from other. Uh, yes. 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 So so that that is a concern. Once um, so if someone got a hold of your bitstream, then yes, with tools like this, they could they could get something like this. I don't know. Do you think this is useful? If you were a company, would you worry about this getting leaked out? Yeah. It's kind of hard. It, like, it's, there's no names or anything. It's like, it would be like looking at software if someone like flattened all your code out, destroyed all your variable names, and then they said, what does this program do? It's, it's a little bit like that. Um, so it's pretty hard, but, but if you put in some effort, you could kind of, maybe deconstruct someone's secret algorithm or some fancy secret sauce that they've put into a design. Okay, so so what, how do designers protect against this? So on, on Xilinx chips, generally you can encrypt the bitstream, okay? So it's encrypted. And then um, basically at that point, you, well, unless you know the encryption key, I, I could share the bitstream with you. And, and as long as the, 
the key has been kind of programmed into kind of the decry decryption key is actually programmed into the FPGA, then I, I could, I wouldn't have to worry so much at that point. You, you could get my encrypted bitstream, but, but unless you could decrypt it, you couldn't do stuff like this with it, so. All right, I don't know, anything else to talk about for Phasm to Bells? Nope. Okay, oh, yeah. Could you use this to like look at how the wire signals are initially set in your design? So like if certain inputs or outputs were set to ones and zeros, when the, when the build happened? Uh, or is it a little too much for that? Tell me more, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, yeah, well, I don't know if I'm quite understanding. So like I had a, I have a problem where um, something I'm running in Vivado, um, it, it sets a clock to all zeros, but when I run it in CB flow, it sets it to all ones. I'm trying to figure out why. So I was wondering if I could use this maybe. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it might provide you some insight or if you could go back and find some mismatch, then you might narrow down where the, change happen so yeah sure yeah you could you could for sure yeah you could stick it back into Vivado and ask it to re make another bitstream for you and you could do the cycle over and over again <laughs> okay 